Hello, welcome to a uh, quick demonstration of how Immuta can help with um, data mesh uh, use cases on Snowflake. And specifically, we're going to talk about this two layer federated governance model and give a demo. Um, so when you think about uh, federated governance, as a business, you have what you would think of as global standards that you need enforced. Um, so this is what we're depicting in this picture as a global horizontal policy. And so if you have a database per domain set up where each of these domain owners are building their own data products in, these, in each of their respective databases, um, a global governance user should be able to build these global horizontal policies that span all the data products, no matter the domain. Um, and, you know, for example, if, if it's a, a life science use case, you might want to uh, mask any PHI for, for, except for potentially certain um, users. Now, where this gets interesting is that you also want to empower what we would think of as these vertical policies where these domain owners or the data product owners would be able to build their, their own additional policies that augment these horizontal standards. Um, and this is very complex to manage without a tool like Immuta because anytime one of these domain owners wants to make a change, they have to go talk to the people that are in charge of these policies and make that change. With Immuta, you can actually uh, empower and delegate the, the ownership of these policies to these domain owners, and Immuta can handle all the conflict resolution between these horizontal and vertical policies. So we're gonna demonstrate uh, some of that today quickly. Um, so I'm going to first talk about this initial scenario. Actually, I'm going to bounce out of snow, out of slide presentation mode here and because uh, I'm going to jump to a demo. But um, this is the scenario, in fact, that we're going to walk through where we have these two data owners and their own respective data products um, that come from their own database, which represents their domain. Um, and I'm going to show you how uh, the Immuta data portal, you can actually manage the metadata about your, um, your data products. And this is going to be uh, important for how we build policies in a moment. So um, let me actually build, bring up this other user, Floyd. So this is my user, Floyd, who's logged into Immuta. And this is his data product, Encounters with Cost. And we have this other user, Juan, and this is his Immuta uh, view, and he has this provider details data source. So he's the owner of that. You'll notice that, that Juan only sees his, and Floyd only sees his. Juan's actually had, um, if we dive in and look at the data dictionary, um, you can see all these little, these column, this column here are all the columns that exist in that table. And these little pills here are um, the, the information that Immuta was able to discover about this table and the columns. So we call this sensitive data discovery. Sensitive data discovery runs and tags up the data with what it finds. You can also um, tag your data in Snowflake and Immuta will suck that information in and augment the tags that Immuta finds. So these are all automatically discovered. Um, if I come back to um, the uh, Floyd's view here, and we go to this encounters with cost. This one, in fact, does not yet have um, any tags on the table yet. So if we go here, we did not run sensitive data discovery here. And instead I'm going to um, manually add some tags here. So for the total claim cost, I'm gonna put a payment amount tag manually here. And we see that tag now. Um, and if we go up to the encounter class, I'm gonna add SNOMED class to this. This is some SNOMED data. And you'll notice what starts happening here is remember I added payment amount and then we see this financial tag appear. And this appeared because um, we saw the payment amount and we said, hey, we're gonna classify this as financial information. If I refresh the screen real, real quick, you'll see that 
where we tagged SNOMED actually got tagged with medical diagnostic code as well. So you can add these higher level classifications on top of the entities that are found as well. And that'll become important in a second. Um, you also notice that um, Floyd was able to add documentation about his data product in the data portal as well. Okay, so let's move on. I'm gonna talk a little bit about data tagging. So you saw that I demonstrated we could automatically discover data with a sensitive data discovery capability. You can also manually add tags, as I mentioned. Um, you could do that you know, through our UI, which I just showed, or you know, in DBT, you could add them to Snowflake, for example. And as I mentioned, you can suck those in. Um, or if you have an existing catalog, we can pull in the, the metadata you have in there and, and augment what's captured in Amuda as well with that. And then as you saw, we built those higher level classifications from these entities. Um, like you saw medical diagnostic code up here um, as I tag something with SNOMED class. Um, so you can customize these higher level classifications and then you can furthermore class um, customize the sensitivity level of those higher level classifications. So we may say that something tagged financial is also highly sensitive, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and this all, these kind, this semantic layer, if you will, is what allows us to um, build policies at scale and provide the framework to allow these horizontal and vertical policies, which I'll see in a second. So let's go to the next scenario. Um, so we're going to show that the data portal hides and shows data products based on policy. So remember, I briefly showed that you know Floyd could only see his data product and Juan could only see his. Um, and Sarah, who you haven't seen yet, we'll pull her up. She can't see anything right now because there are no um, data products available to her via policy. So what I'm gonna do is have Steve build a policy in his Amuda. So this is Steve. He can see both because he has that permission to build these horizontal policies, which we talked about a second ago. So if we come in here, I'm gonna have Steve build a new policy that allows anyone that's a data product um, creator to see all of their data products. So I'm gonna call this data product creators. And we're gonna see anyone that has um, group data product creators um, is gonna be able to see these tables. And we're gonna say that they're not automatically gonna see them in Snowflake, they actually have to subscribe to them or click a button and mute it to gain access. And we're gonna say share responsibility too, because we remember we want these horizontal policies to be able to be extended by our uh, data product owners. So we're gonna share responsibility. Um, and this, this will become more clear exactly how this works in a second, which I'll show you some policies merging. So we're just gonna do this on all data sources. So if, if you're a data product creator, you're gonna be able to subscribe to any data products in the uh, portal. So we're gonna go ahead and activate this policy. And if you remember, a second ago, when I brought up Floyd, he could only see his encounters with cost, which he's the owner of. But if I refresh this screen, he now sees Juan's data product too. Notice that owner tag isn't there. And similarly, if we bring up Juan's screen, um, he can now see Floyd's, which he does not own. Now, more interestingly, Sarah, who is not a data product creator, still can't see anything. Um, all right, so let's go back. And the point of that was just to show that the Immuta data portal respects the policies that you're placing on the data. So it's not only enforcing policy in Snowflake, but it's also enforcing it in that data portal, that UI. And we'll show the policies being enforced in Snowflake in a second here. So now we're gonna actually do some conflict resolution. So now we're gonna have Floyd build an additional vertical policy that augments this horizontal policy and Immuta will handle that merging. Um, so let's go ahead and bring up Floyd's screen. And before I build the policy, I just wanna show that um, the current policy is allow users to subscribe to the data source when member of group data product creators. Remember that's the one Steve just created. So Floyd knows that he actually wants care ma managers to be able to subscribe to this table, right? Because it's got, um, his medical diagnostic details. So we're gonna call this care managers and we're gonna allow people to subscribe. 
when they're member root care managers. And he's going to do that same thing where we're going to require that they actually click something in Amuta to, before they can see the table. And Floyd's also going to share responsibility. And we're going to do this um, on data sources with columns tag medical diagnostic code. Remember, that was that tag that appeared when Floyd manually tagged it with SNOMED class. So that happens to be one out of two of our data sources, but there could be hundreds of Floyd's data products with med medical diagnostic code. So you would only have to create this policy once and it would apply in all places. Notice though, if there were other tables or data products that Floyd didn't own, but also had medical diagnostic code tagged, he would not be able to impact those because this is going to be limited to only the, the data products that Floyd owns. So again, this is one out of two of those data sources. So we're going to go ahead and activate this. So now this policy is it being enforced. And the, the more interesting part is Mimuta merged it for us. So remember before, we only had Steve's policy, data product creators, but we added this or is in group care managers. So Immuta was successfully able to merge Floyd's policy with Steve's policy. And it ordered them together because they both selected shared responsibility. If one of them had selected always required, this would have been an and instead. Um, so this is a great example of being able to merge these policies together, um, the horizontal and vertical. Now, more interestingly, if we bring Sarah back up here, she can refresh her screen and now she can see this because she's a care manager. And in fact, you know, she could search, I know there's only one thing in here, so it's kind of silly, but she could search for medical diagnostic codes and find that data source now. So there's a capability to search and discover. Um, all right, so Sarah could see it, but she, we haven't actually done anything in Snowflake yet. So now we're gonna show that Sarah can't query it, but she's gonna find it in the portal like we just showed um, and subscribe to it, which will push an update down into Snowflake that allows her to actually query it. And we'll show her querying it. So we'll do a little before and after the cooking show here. So let's bring Sarah back. We're gonna actually have her query this encounters with cost table here in Snowflake. So now Sarah's in Snowflake, she's left Amuta. We're running the query directly in Snowflake, and you can see that she does not have access yet. Um, so what we're gonna have Sarah do, you can see there's this get access button. She could come in here, you know, read about this data product and click, click get access, subscribe. And she's automatically subscribed to it. And notice that subscribe button appears there. Now, you could add extra humans in the loop if you wanted to, to have someone manually approve her access. But since she's a care manager, and she knows she's a care manager, you can see the policy. She clicks the subscribe button, she's automatically subscribed. And so if we go back here into Snowflake, again, this query is running directly in Snowflake. Um, now she's actually able to see that data. I wanna point out this total claim cost column here too. We're gonna to talk about that in a second. All right, so now final step in the demo. Um, we're going to show that Steve can actually review the audit and find a problem, a compliance problem. And because of that compliance problem, he can mitigate it immediately by building another global policy that spans all data products. So if we go back here to Steve, we can go, sorry, into this audit tab, and we can have Steve say, I wanna find all highly sensitive queries. And we can see this query from Sarah that's highly sensitive. If we dive into it, it says that one, out of the three columns um, are sensitive. We can see that query, that's, that's that query that I just showed you a second ago in Snowflake from Sarah. And we can dive into the columns and we can see that total claim cost is highly sensitive because it's, a finan it's tagged with financial. We said that financial was highly sensitive. So again, you can customize your sensitivity so that you know, what is, is marked and alerted to you as highly sensitive is relevant to your business. Um, so Steve can say, oh crap, I don't want um, care managers to be able to see financial information. I'm gonna build a data policy that um, hides anything financial. So we're actually gonna just have, Steve's gonna mask, rather than kicking Sarah out of that table, he's just gonna mask the financial information. Because as a care manager, she, she shouldn't see that anyway. 
So we're going to say mask financial. We're going to say mask columns tag financial. And we'll just, so it's easy to see, redacted, but there's lots of different ways um, you can mask that column. For everyone except members of group billing, because we want the billing folks to still be able to see the financial information, right? So we'll add that. And this is, applies to one out of two of my data sources. So we're gonna go ahead and activate this. So now again, I've built this global policy that's gonna mask everything financial across all data products whether it was that one that Sarah was just querying or not, right? So that's the power of having those semant that semantic tag layer. So if you bring Sarah back here, she can see the total claim cost and she runs this query again, you'll see that it's nulled out. And you might say, hey, I thought you said you wanted to mask it with redacted. So that, that's the other beauty of Immuta is if you do something like obviously a, a number column can't show the word redacted. So Immuta has these smart fallbacks where it says, oh, look, this is actually a numeric column, not string. So I'm just going to null it out instead of putting the word redacted there, which doesn't make sense for a numeric column. Um, and just to show that these are native policies in Snowflake, I'm going to go back here to Steve's um, table and we're going to run a, uh, a query on the information schema for the policy references on this encounters with cost table. And we see that there's a masking policy there. And if we dig into the details of this masking policy, you can see exactly what, um, you know, Immuta wrote in there. Uh, so that's the logic of the policy. So again, these are native policies in Snowflake. Immuta is not in the data path at all. Um, so that's the, um, the demo. Hopefully this gave you a good understanding of how uh, Immuta can empower this federated governance uh, model. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, please reach out to your Snowflake rep or your Muta rep and, and we can dig in more. Thanks.